Good evening and welcome to all of you. I'm Loredana Comunara, the Artistic Director of Italy on screen today, Film and TV Series Fest. It's a great honor for me to introduce our special guest, Gabriele Muccino. Hello, Gabriele. And uh, Rosario Dozon. Hello to all of you. And uh, I'm very happy to have you here. And uh, thank you for having accepted our invitation. And journalist Silvia Bizio, who will host the Q&A session. Hello, Silvia. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So we have an online connection for the audience of Italian Screen Today as the festival that has been promoting the best Italian film productions for five years now. And as of this year, the TV series too. For this edition, we are streaming on the My Movies platform visible throughout the United States. Okay, so now I leave the floor to Silvia and uh, I see you in a moment for greetings and thanks. See you later, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you Loredana. Hello Gabriele, hello Rosario, how nice to see you both. I've known Gabriele for a long, long time and Rosario, I've had the pleasure of meeting you. Also in the past, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm a journalist for La Repubblica, daily newspaper. I'm very proud to be talking to you about a, a film that, to start, uh, that I really love, The Best Years, uh, um, Gabriele's recent movie. And also we'll talk about Seven Pounds, which is the movie that you two did together in 2007? Seven. 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 Six, seven. Yes, yeah, I think seven. Seven. I believe seven. seven. What do you think, Rosario? Seven? Yeah. I, it, was, it was seven. I think it was yeah. seven. I think, and then it came out 2008, right? Fantastic. No, it came out in the Christmas 2007. Okay, so then yeah. In the earlier month. Yeah, okay. 13 yes. years ago. Wonderful. Crazy. Gabriele, let me start uh, with you. Um, the Best Years uh, is uh, a movie that uh, felt, uh, you, you told me already, uh, quite personal for you and uh, where a lot of you is in there. Uh, yeah. Tell us about uh, how you wanted to express uh, so many facets uh, of, your, of yourself uh, and also in a movie that looks also at the history of Italy over the last, uh, you know, four decades. Four years, uh, yes, uh, four decades. Uh, I, I believe that, that after 11 movies, I felt really deeply that I want to say something about uh, the origins of um, um, our journeys into life. So I, I came up with the idea of telling the story of four teenagers starting in the 80s and following them throughout uh, for four decades till uh, the year 2020. And uh, throughout this time, you can really understand how time is the real Muppet maneuver of our destiny, our lives. I mean, we are, mm, we are uh, forced to make choices every single day mostly are very tiny choices. Sometimes they are pretty big ones, even if they appear small ones. And every single choice somewhat is, 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 is like a crossroad. And uh, it's like turning right or left or going straight ahead. And the, uh, the sum of those choices is pretty much the journey of your life. And you don't realize when you, when you say yes or not to any, any little thing. But at a certain point, you are becoming someone, someone else or, or, or you are going farther and farther from what you thought you were because you are just giving, making wrong or right choices. And you don't know if they are, if they are right or wrong till 
some time later. So it's very fascinating to explore what life is about uh, throughout uh, this, the amount of choices that, that those four friends make uh, throughout their life which make them uh, uh, conflicting, uh, fighting, and then reuniting, and then uh, realizing things that went wrong and why, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there was, uh, I mean, this movie, this movie was the best way to explore human relationships and, and also how the human being um is it, it's um how vulnerable how vulnerable and volatile is the human nature and uh, we can fall down or uh, or achieve incredible uh, achievements um, just making the right or wrong choices and it's, we never know what what is the, the real answer and it's very fascinating to tell the story. It was very fascinating to write it, to, to tell it. And I think the movie came out extremely emo emotional and uh, inspiring because uh, it's very, very easy to relate uh, ourselves with the characters. Uh, and yeah. that makes me right. To relate to each one of them with their own peculiarities in yeah. particular. Of course, these are four friends, three men, and one woman, and the story really relay, it really centers and focuses around the evolution of Gemma, uh, who is wonderful. Yet another film in which a woman is kind of at the core of your stories, Gabriele. Yeah, but at the end of the day, women are always the the center. We are trying to to you know to understand. We are circling around women the entire life. And our entire existence as men is always trying to understand the incredibly mysterious uh, universe that is in a woman's mind. And unfortunately, we are not so sophisticated and we are always a step behind or two or three steps behind. So the mystery of understanding a woman, it's, uh, it's what makes uh, probably love and a, a relationship so intriguing, so articulated, so complicated, and, uh, and, and to, to really understand, find the, the key of, of, of a real common ground, it's an incredible achievement. And, and I wish to have the, you know, the map to, to navigate into that. This film is also, as I mentioned before, like a who's who of Italian cinema today. You have amazing actors, uh, some of the best actors working in Italy today, incredible composer. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how you put together this team. Yes, um, I worked with uh, two out of four of them in my previous uh, Italian movies, even uh, before coming to work in America. So I met uh, Claudio Santa Maria, one of them, in the 97 in my first feature. Uh, I met Pier Francesco Favino in my third feature, which was uh, done in the, in, in the year 2000. And then uh, I always try to work with Kim Rossi Stewart, who is a, an excellent Italian actor, and I never had a chance. And this time, finally, he, he was uh, able to say yes to my offer. <laughs> and then there is Gemma, this uh, incredible actress uh, we have in Italy that I I've always thought to, to be the perfect uh, incarnation of this uh, type of woman. So, so... Um, mm, Zotti, of course. Uh, sorry, yes, Michela Ramazzotti. She's so lost. She's so she she, she has so many uh, um, uh, fears to be uh, abandoned, being an orphan. That she she tries to feel this 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 lack of love um, with men. But that not that's not the 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 
the the right way to fulfill her um, her hem her hem um, emptiness. So basically, we we follow her journey and we realize through her eyes that basically she met the, the love of her life when she was 16 and then the rest of her life was just trying to understand who she was but most simply she found already herself when she had eyes ready to capture reality and truth and then growing up we get messed up by life and sometimes we don't see things how they really are and uh, it, it becomes easier to be um, uh, let down by people to stop believing in love and and to and to 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 lose the path through to, towards happiness somewhat and the journey of uh, of this character Gemma is pretty much a, a big circle that uh, uh, ends the moment that she finds her, her center and realizes that she doesn't need another man another man to lean on someone but she can um, she can uh, count on herself which is a which which seems a simple way to be right, in the right place, but it's not that easy at all. I mean, and women have so many um, obstacles given by the society. Uh, we're talking more and more lately, but uh, the, the society of men don't help at all a woman to feel um, strong and in control of her life uh, as she deserves. And so this is pretty much uh, mm, the sum up uh, <laughs> of the a sum up of the best years, the best year, which right. uh, is yes. a new movie just came, came out in Italy this year. And I would like to take this opportunity to actually open now the conversation to Rosario, a, a, a wonderful uh, actor who you, uh, Gabriele, you work with in Seven Pounds. And I would like a, a movie that somehow as you were talking, I kept thinking about that role, Rosario, that you played and how that journey that your character went through. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that character and your encounter with Gabriele, what was your first reaction when this crazy Italian guy showed up and said, <laughs> <laughs> work with me? <laughs> I have to say, I'm like mesmerized listening to you, Gabriele. It's been too long. And, um, you know, being able to, to bring Emily Posa to life was just so powerful. And um, what was so wonderful was that we didn't have to do it right away with cameras. We had a really, really long time doing and just weeks of working on scene for scene for scene, going through the film in completion and, um, and just working on all of the different, you know, sort of textures and tones of what we were wanting to achieve. And so it's for me, it's like, it's, it's so wonderful, Mira Kelindo. It's so wonderful, you know, hearing, you know, Gabriela, you talking about your new film because so much of those themes about just the real sort of emotional reality of people and the experiences they're going through, you know, that was the thing that was the glue um, for us in every single moment that tethered us to what we were doing was what was emotionally happening for this person in that present second. Every single scene we did had to feel real. He wouldn't let Will go into any kind of expressions. If he started doing the furrowed brow, like, oh, this is the serious scene, he'd go, what is this? <laughs> I don't want you to pretend like you're pretending to be serious. I want this to be serious. I want this to be heartbreaking. I want it to be confusing and, and things. I want to feel the anxiety, be in that moment and, and with these people. So like when I watch it, you know, I remember being so attuned to her breath and her energy, you know, like it was the scene and it was the connection between these two people, but it was also her heart and her physicality and what she wanted 
to do, but she couldn't with every moment she was having with this wonderful human being in front of her, you know? And so it was just, there were so many things that he kept present for us to think about in every second of every line of every scene that it just made the world feel very real, you know? And, and it wasn't just trying to get a, a device or a particular line to kind of move the story along. It was really trying to ground these people as real people who are traumatized and are hopeful and are just all of these different things that make, I think, the movie so vivid for people all these years later. Because we really did try to inject a lot of love into these characters and a lot of respect for every moment that they were going through and every precious second that we got to share of what their experience was scene for scene. And, and I remember, I always, I do, just listening to you right now again, Gabriele, I'm thinking about, we're on this, we're doing this scene in a field. And yeah. because the grass was really long, you know, we couldn't keep going backwards and forwards. So we had to like kind of go in a roundabout way, Will and I, and no one else could go up there. So Gabriele has this like big uh, dictaphone thing. And he's screaming at us to like hear across the field Willa, I need you to be a, like a newborn baby boy. <laughs> Action. And we're looking at each other and it was like, I think he means more vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> like beautiful. He wouldn't give these like super direct notes where it was like, just be more angry or just be more, which sometimes I feel like people can cheat with you know like just just get enough of that emotion in there so people will get what we're trying to say and then we can move on no like think about what a naked newborn baby boy is it's shivering it's screaming it's it, it's feeling air on its body for the first time it's feeling what touches for the first like it brings to mind so many different things that you can't even just articulate it it isn't just one furrow of the brow or something. It's it's a whole robustness of presence of feeling. And I just I, I got so much from that experience filming, you know, with you, Gabriele, and just how how serious you take this, how be, you know, what this this storytelling at its finest. This is the ability to really deep dive into a person's experience in a way that makes it universal for everyone if you try to be as honest about it as possible, you know, and not just be yourself and do your cheats, but really try to bring to life who this person is in this moment. Um, and it was beautiful. So it was, and I, I love Emily Poza. I, I love that character. I love that experience. And I, and I love every single time someone stops me to talk about what their experience of watching that film was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that that's really moving, and uh, I forgot uh, what I said on the field, but makes sense that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Remember it word for word. <laughs> like, and, I have you know, never I, heard direction like that from a director before. I've been doing this a long time, and I have a feeling I never will. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I strongly believe we should work again together because. I uh, hope You've worked with Will twice. You keep doing it with other people. I know. I, we have to make it even. Now, now it's your turn, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very good idea. <laughs> I would work with her like now, right now. <laughs> it, it seems like this movie occupied the quite, and this is one of the movies that actually Gabriele has suggested that, that we show as part of this retrospective of of his favorite movies. So this is a movie that seems like it still holds a special place in both of your lives. Yeah. It, was it, besides the experience of working together, was it also the story, what it meant, uh, what it gave to the audiences? Mm, uh, well, the movie was a, 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 a very, very challenge, challenging uh, bet with the art of making films. Because actually in the, in, in, in the plot, we were not giving away 
the story or basically the 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 the, the, um, uh, the reasons of the leader for 40 minutes at least so people yeah. was possibly thrown off and uh, getting bored after 15 of, or 10 minutes In, uh, instead we tried and we found a way to hook the audience uh, despite they didn't know what was going to happen and what the movie was about for a long time. That was the first huge achievement that I believe strongly that seven, pound, uh, seven pounds uh, um, achieved. Secondly, it's a, it's a, it, and, and, and this part is what the marketing of the movie never really high, highlighted. But it's a really a love story. It's one of the most uh, emotional love story I could imagine. I'm basically this guy who's completely mm, messed up. Uh, is basically uh, uh, planning he, uh, to give his own organs and to kill himself. He ends up falling in love with the girl who's supposed to be the recipient, uh, and the girl who is who he was supposed to give the heart, but now he's in love with this girl, and the dilemma is so powerful because he has to give his own heart to give life to the woman he loves. And doing this, uh, he loses uh, dying the woman he loves so much and who, br who brought him back to life. So it, it's so twisted and so uh, excruciating the decision he takes uh, that I think that it, it's the reason why I also hear people talking to me about seven pounds very often. In in you, I don't know about in 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 the, in the United States, but in, in Europe, it's it's a, it's a sort of classic because it's it's a love story told the, um, with this you know told this way. It's pretty unseen. I mean, I never saw anything like it. Uh, you know, there are millions of beautiful love stories but to really give your heart to save the people you love despite that you were planned to kill yourself but you changed mind it's really something that blew my mind when i read the script and i think it still works very very strongly when you see the movie mm -hmm. Uh, I hope like, I didn't make things too complicated. No, it, it. Really, it brings tears to my eyes even hearing it about really just this idea, the gesture of giving someone your heart, you know, like you say this all the time and, yeah, you know, but you just, that you give your heart to someone, you know, but then he, he literally and figuratively does because by doing, if he doesn't, she dies. Yeah, right. You know, and so it's, it's, it's true love. Like, it's just, it's really such a beautiful, there were so many moments. I felt so grateful being able, I remember auditioning for this and I had like thrown tissue or something across the room and it hit the um, casting director. <laughs> and he had been crying because of the audition or something. And then I threw tissue, but it like hit her in the face or something. I can't remember. And I was like, I went from probably nailing this job to just losing it in two seconds. Like I was just like, oh my God. And I remember going home and just being super emotional. Like I have to do this film. And then when we were working on, you know, and doing the rehearsals and coming up with so many beautiful moments that ended up in the film and just the trust that I was given from you and Will to really embody this character and the, the notes that I was able to, to kind of bring to life and the things that I had come to imagine, you know, I, you know, wanting to have the dog be a Great Dane because they tend to live only seven years because they have heart issues. Their hearts are too small for their big bodies. And like, just like so many little things like learning how to do the printing press. And I put, I, I, I offered two songs that are in the film you know, like just like oh, yes. uh, formidable. Uh huh. And uh -huh. like a couple things, and that I don't know, 
the I don't know song. And I mean, there's just like so much stuff where I remember being in the room and going, you know, where we're, you know, brainstorming about stuff and going, what could work here? What could this be? And then speaking up and having an idea and everybody, oh, okay, that works. And actually, if we did it like this with that, you know, and, and then so when you watch the movie, I just felt such um, ownership of it. Like no one else could play this role. This was my role and it was Gabriele's role and it was Will's role. Like we were supposed to make this film together and we gave it, I know we gave it our all. Like we showed up for this story because this story was so powerful and so poignant. And I'm so glad because it really is, I keep saying vivid, but it's very vivid for people. I've had people stop me and talk to me about their daughter who died, who gave organs to people and that they've gone to meet or that they wonder in the community because it's only in a certain amount of hours or miles that these organs can even travel. So they know, you know, when they walk down the street, they wonder, is that my daughter's Mm. you know is my daughter partly walking by me somehow or just like just so many different incredible conversations I've had with people and it's always moving it's always tears it's grown men going that movie always makes me cry and every time it's on I have to watch it you know like it's it feels mm. okay it, it allows people to tap into a level of emotionality that I think we we don't get to very often that so often in movies is just maybe hitting a sappy note so you right. almost want to feel guilty about it. People don't feel guilty about that with this film. This film touches something really crucial to, I think, our own perception of what our life choices are and to be that much more present. And that's, 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 what the, that's the lesson I feel like I've heard back from people is that it, it rendered people more present. And that's just so powerful. It's powerful. I love that's it. so beautiful to hear. I, I, I agree so much with your take and it's so it's so much mine and we are so much bonded because we are it's truly a, we, we are it, it, it's very emotional for me to talk about that movie because the movie was really made with pure love unconditional love mm -hmm. somewhat, uh, uh, talking about a conditional love and yeah it, it's very emotional I don't know if, if uh, uh, I have a surprise for someone. You have the original one. <laughs> uh, that's so uh, amazing. amazing. Those are what things. Scene, I wonder what scene was that? 188AB. <laughs> uh, 188AB. Uh, two cameras. Uh, roll. <laughs> no. Well, on this note, this has been wonderful to hear you talk about this film, and I'm so glad that the audience of Italian Screen in New York will have a chance to see this movie, because just like they will have a chance, by the way, Gabriele, to see two other movies that you really loved, which is Fathers yes. and Daughters and The Last Kids, L'Ultimo Bacio, they will be on the platform as well, together with Seven Pounds and The Best Years. Right. And so... Uh, we would like, uh, Loredana, uh, and I would like to give you, Gabriele, the Wind of Europe Award, the Wind of okay. Europe International Award, which you have, we virtually okay, so. passing you. Hey, yeah, yeah. We are. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it was very fast. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I really, I thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you why the Wind of Europe International Award to Gabriele Muccino for his ability to tell about the roller coaster of human relationships in all their facets with their fragilities and bonds leading stellar casts time after time. Congratulations, Gabriele. <laughs> Thank you. Grazie. Grazie. Thank you so much. And the same award is on its way applied <laughs> to Rosario. <laughs> to her, but does, does it go through? Does it, does it, does it work? <laughs> We're going to share. <laughs> We're going to share it like, so that. Pretend, like that. <laughs> yeah, share it or pretend it has arrived already, Rosario. The Wind of Europe International Award to Rosario Dawson for her talent as an actress, always ready to work with different directors and to play different characters and for her political and social commitment. Congratulations, right, Rosario. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bravo. Bravo.
Brava, brava. And thank you so much. Congratulations for, for both, for both of you. Grazie. <laughs> Back to you. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. How much? So back to me, I just uh, would like to thank the audience that listened to this interesting conversation. And uh, so thank you for being here with us. Uh, I thank the Italian Ministry of Culture, the Italian ambassador to the United States, Armando Verricchio, the Italian Consulate General and the Italian Institute of Culture of New York for their support. And thank you again to Gabriele Muccino and Rosario Dawson and Silvia Bizio too. And greetings to our audience and stay tuned with us. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Grazie. Gracias. <laughs> to the next one and enjoy the films.